Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with another complete scene build. And this time we're creating a stylized astronomy scene environment. And if you are interested in how long this scene actually took to put together, then stay till the end, we'll actually give you an actual table of contents displaying not only how long every single part took, but also the difficulty of actually producing this actual scene broke down between grey boxing, modelling, texturing and setting everything up in Unreal Engine. So if you're just interested in that, or if you're interested because you're thinking about going and working in a studio, then make sure you stay to the end to check that out. This scene comes with its own blend file, not only so you can see how the scene was created, with all of the render options, but also how I use the compositor to get to this result. You can also see how the rigging and animations work. Basically, you can download this blend file and pull everything apart. Within this pack that you can download, you'll also find all of the textures, not only for Blender, but also for Unreal Engine 5, just in case you want to set it up within that game's engine. Everything is named and ready to go. Oh, and also there's an Unreal Engine 5 texture pack as well. So whether you want to use Blender or Unreal Engine, the choice is up to you. Links to the Gumroad are down below. And of course it's free to all of our Patreon members, along with over 250 hours of Blender courses. So be sure to check those out. And every Monday, right here on our YouTube channel, you'll find a tutorial covering some of the techniques in depth that you'll find in our complete scene builds. Yesterday was the ultimate guide for importing textures, mainly aimed at beginners to Blender, showing you various setups like ambient occlusion, opacity, and emission. These are things that are not actually that obvious when you first actually are introduced to Blender. And of course, we also cover the basics of importing with the Node Wrangler, your basic texture setups. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link at the top right of your screen now. And if I forget, then simply head on over to our channel and you'll find the video over there. And also while you're over there, give us a like and subscribe. As always, if you want to get your ideas featured in one of our scenes, then drop your comments down below. And we've had some amazing ideas so far, and at least two of them are in the works. Finally, all the techniques you see here in these scene builds are covered in our massive library of over 20 courses and 200,000 downloads, so be sure to check those out. But enough of all that, what you're here for is to see how we put this scene together. So let's get started on our stylized astronomy scene. In order to start off my project, I began the gray box texturing phase by actually sorting out the main asset of this environment, and that's going to be the telescope. I wanted to get this out of the way first because I didn't know what kind of a size I wanted to have it first, and I wanted to check the way the layout is going to be for this kind of asset and the way the entire shape is going to affect the environment and I'm just playing around with the primitives, getting all the kind of a main shape out of the way first and just getting the silhouette kind of nice uh, looking. And then I figured uh, I need to get some of the references in my PureF. Uh, I'm using a PureF because it's really nice and easy to just overlay kind of images and use it to work in your area. So I'm using that. And basically I'm just getting multiple assets of kind of um, telescopes or observation decks. I'm just mixing both of them within my references. And right now I'm just using it to get base and the sides, the way they're connected to the main telescope section, to the lens, and just making sure I'm adding some additional detail to the sides just to break off the entire shape. So I was playing around with what's underneath the entire telescope. I'm playing around with how the um, kind of a compass would look like inside of it or whatnot kind of uh, was interested by that idea but I think I scrapped it in the end so right now I'm just playing around how it would move for example the telescope adding some axis around and thinking of the way the gears would move for example or the way you'd use it in order to kind of observe what's going on so right now I'm thinking with, since it's probably going to be standing on the table I wanted to add a way to look inside of the telescope so right now I figured maybe I'll add like a mirror sort of a design 
and have it reflect into the telescope so that way you wouldn't have to pick up the entire thing and you could just look at it down way and it wouldn't be quite nice to have it as a design so right now i'm also thinking of a way to use gears just to have that move a little bit if uh, for example a person would want it to be kind of moved around so i'm also thinking of a way to then attach it to the side of the telescope itself and how that would be behaving when it's moving in regards to the entire telescope so again i'm using base primitives and just kind of working with cylinders at the moment uh, getting some extrusion bits out uh, just getting some uh, finer detail just out of the way a little bit although right now i'm just focusing on the gray box itself i wanted to get a little bit some of the detail out of the way as well so right now i wanted to get like a hole inside just to have that kind of a gear and it's going to be much nicer if it's inside of a kind of a base the foundation of the underneath that kind of a lens and right now i'm just adding a couple of extra gears underneath also wanted to add a little bit more detail for the main foundation the base of the telescope so i added that then i moved on to actually getting some detail out of the way for the main lens and i figured i might as well add some additional feature to it and get some additional kind of um lens uh, to the side of it just to break off the entire kind of look since we are making a style as kind of an asset right now at the moment so i figured like it, what if i'd add something to the side of it enhance let's say uh, your kind of observation towards the sky and towards the stars and whatnot so i'm adding kind of a next lens to it uh, it's going to be a little bit sideways i'm always trying to use diagonal kind of ways the angles that i'm trying to use are going to be like 15 35 45 that sort of angles so i'd be more consistent with the way they're positioned diagonally and whatnot so whenever i'm using for example for the legs right now what i'm building i'm uh, currently trying to think of a way to get free uh, positions out of the legs so what i did was i just got myself a calculator real quick i got 360 degrees and divided by three and then i just moved it uh, by that amount of angle throughout this entire uh, center of the pivot point so by doing that i was able to get a free legged uh, kind of a telescope uh, that are those three legs are split in exactly even ways so that was quite nice Afterwards, I went ahead and continued playing around with the design of this telescope. I wanted to think of a way to maybe add gears to the side of it instead, instead of it being in the middle. So I was trying to play around with that and I quite liked the idea, so I went ahead and used that instead. I then had to figure out a way to get some gears maybe to the side and uh, think of a way it would move. So I was doing that as well. I was adding some gears at the bottom of the base just to kind of fit to the sides of those gears as well so again i'm just playing around and experimenting with the entire shape just to make sure i'm breaking off some edges and i'm happy with the overall kind of a shape and aesthetics of this telescope so i was now playing around with some bolts and whatnot uh, just getting a couple of them in just to make sure that the front is not too empty looking and i'm also thinking of adding something extra to it so like a fuse or something of the sort kind of a metallic uh, look just again to break off the entire shape since on the left side of the telescope if you're looking from the front it will have a second kind of a um, lens and that will kind of um, make the design a little bit unbalanced looking so by adding in this to the right side i was hoping that i'll kind of balance off the overall design look and aesthetics of this telescope so that is the way uh, that is my reasoning for doing it so afterwards i went ahead and tried playing around with the the base the legs of this telescope and i wanted to get some metallic bits uh, some bits of uh, bits of rings just to kind of break off the overall design and just to make it more um let's say aesthetically pleasing but it's not really aesthetically pleasing it's more like a yeah more like a stylized kind of just design that i went with so once i was happy with the result i was also thinking of uh, getting some um, symmetry on the sides as well but i left off the for example the mirror that was at the back of the be one-sided because i figured it just looks much much nicer so anyway moving on uh we now went ahead and continued on with the project i now want to get the second uh, asset out of the way and that was going to be the globe since that is the kind of a um, main focus of the environment as well 
So I was playing around with the way the rings would look like, for example, and I just figured I'd just make a couple of them uh, to just be uh, revolving around the main globe. And then I figured uh, they would look quite nice if we'd have them rotated around and, and stuff. So that is my uh, kind of a design. I wanted to keep them simple since if they are going to have motion, I figured it'd be much nicer if they just wouldn't be um, overwhelming kind of the entire environment. And so that's why, that's the reasoning behind keeping it simplistic. So moving on, uh, then I experimented a little bit more with the way the rings interact with one another. I figured that maybe if I connect them using a bridge tool, it would look quite nice. But all in all, I just ended up having it kind of float there. And if I'd have them rotated, it would look quite magical in itself. So after I had those main designs out of the way, I went ahead and tried to design a table the way it, look, it would look quite nice. And I figured that one level kind of a table wouldn't look as nice. So I added like a kind of a shelf on the top just to have one asset higher and another lower. In this way, I think it would turn out much nicer since the overall shape, the silhouette of this environment, which would look much nicer. So then I played around with the legs a little bit. I wanted to get some base foundation out of the way, the overall kind of a look of this table. So I got some thicker legs for them and then I played around a little bit with the base of that floor and I just left it as is. I figured it'd be uh, too thin for the kind of the way they're holding up right now, but I left it as is. Then underneath, I wanted to add something extra. I wasn't quite sure what to add there. So for now, I just left it as boxes since I figured like some inventory or something extra underneath there might look quite nice. So otherwise it quite looks quite empty. So then I figured why not add a stool to it and have it kind of break off the middle section just with that. So I was doing that. And then for the middle section of the table, I wanted to add something extra just to not look at empty. So I wanted to add a book, but just adding a book by itself would look quite, uh, wouldn't look quite as nice. So I added kind of a book holder to it as well. And then I was thinking of the way to do the handles, the kind of the shelves for the table as well, just again to break off the entire shape. And then I figured, what if I'd add something on top just to cover up like a kind of a cloth, just to make it kind of a nicer looking uh, table. So I've added that. And then I figured the sides of the table wouldn't look as nice either if I just left them as is. So I wanted to add something extra to it. I also wanted to populate this entire table, otherwise it would look quite empty. So maybe some bottles or some candles, something of the sort, uh, just to play around. So for now I left it as cylinders. And then I figured that the side of the environment, the scene uh, is kind of plain looking. So I wanted to add something that would be kind of higher than the table itself, just to build up this entire kind of a look of this table. So I was looking at some research, uh, something to do with like maybe like a hanger or maybe something like a sun recorder or something of the sort, something astronomy related, something of that. So I quite liked the way it turned out. And then after I was done, I just looked around to the sides and the way it would look from different angles just in case I'd have like multiple shots going like a turntable or something of the sort and once I was happy with the design I uh, just saved it out and gave it to Neil to continue on with the modeling process. Welcome to the stylized astronomy scene and environment modeling section. And in this part what you can do, you can see first of all, I bring out a plane and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create the main part, which is of course the desk. But first of all, I want to make sure that everything is to scale. So I'll bring in a quick uh, human OBJ, just make sure everything's to scale. And then I start with the top of the actual desk, just pulling out those planks just to make it really that stylized look. Now I didn't feel like I had a lot to go on in this gray box. So what I had to do is I had to use my own Kind of imagination on the fly to actually develop this um, further. So you can see there, first of all, I start with the structure to make sure it's structurally sound. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that it's held up properly. It wants to look chunky. I knew that uh, from the beginning. I knew this was the central point of it. So I knew it was something that I actually had to get right. So you can see once I've done the top of it now, what I'm doing is I'm playing around with ideas and just doing this moon shape and thinking, okay, is that gonna look good? And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to Boolean that out. 
Now you can see I'm going to join it all together, but in the end I decide, you know, this is not looking too great, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that. I put on my cavities just so I have a better look at what everything looks like. And sometimes, if you're having trouble with actually coming up with a design, just carry on with the next part of it, and it makes it a lot better then to actually go back if you need to. So I decided to make two drawers, and that then will give me a better viewpoint of actually how this is actually all going to come together, and how we can actually create the sides if we need to go on ultimate anyway. I also like to make a lot of variations in when I'm working on things. So you can see here, I pull out that little drawer, just to make it look as though it's actually working. Now on Luke's actual grey box, you can see it's very, very small. It's not very chunky at all. And some parts are, some parts aren't. So what I try and do is I try and go in and make um, all of the actual scene look the same stylized way. Because as you know, stylized, it can be really, really um, stylized or, or a very tiny amount, like something like Elder Scrolls, for instance. So in this one, I wanted it fairly chunky and I tried to keep that actually throughout the rest of the scene. You can see I'm making that cloth and there I use the bevel. I'm using the custom bevel as well, which makes it really, really easy to actually bend that cloth in. And if you do want to see that actually, just slow down this uh, video and you'll be able to see exactly how I did that. Now with the stall, I did have some problems. I wasn't sure how exactly I wanted the stall. It, it's, it seems hard for such a simple thing, but I wasn't sure how I was actually going to make these planks of wood actually come together. How are we going to make them? It's okay having four planks of wood on top and then some legs going underneath, but it's not exactly going to fit together very well as you can see. So here I put some metal bars that are going underneath it just to make it look as though it's all actually coming together and someone actually built it. I pulled the legs out slightly because they're too straight the way that the grey box was and finally then I just put some bolts on top of it like that, smooth everything off and then use um, normals and auto smooth to get that right shape in. Next of all, I'm using an actual curve, and what I'm doing now is playing around with ideas of the actual handles, and I, I guess I just went with uh, simple handles, I thought they looked the best on this thing. I could have made them a lot more ornate and things like that, but in the end I decided not to. Now I knew that I wanted different handles on the, the smaller um, compartments, definitely from the big one. The big one I wanted really chunky and probably to be something that's locked. We could actually put a keyhole on there or something like that to make it locked or something. And you can see here the next bit that I'm looking at doing is the candles. I'm actually putting off the globe there because I know it's a little bit hard to do because I'm going to have animations and things like that. So now I'm just creating some simple candles. I split them all up. I basically um, add divisions to them and now I'm just going to sculpt on them. I'm using actual Dynamesh to actually keep uh, Dynamesh in them every time. Um, just to make sure that I'm not ending up with any really bad topology or anything like that. And then once I've done these, basically I'm going to go in and just bring down the uh, topology using Decimate um, while still keeping a lot of the actual um, sculpting that I've actually put on there. But you can see just how much detail you can get in there and just how easy it is to actually do that. And you can see that at the moment there are 180 something thousand polygons. I brought them right down to uh, I think a couple of thousand or something like that. And then I bring in my candles and just place them on there. And you can see they're quite low on topology. Now, if we were doing this for a game or something, I probably would go in and actually um, use a uh, high and low uh, mesh um, on those because they're very small. But for this, uh, because we want to do it relatively quick, we uh, we just basically have them as is. Now we're onto the glow. And I knew I wanted to rebuild this glow. And the reason I rebuilt is because I know I'm going to have animations in it. I'm not sure uh, what Luke's done on the topology or anything like that. So basically I rebuilt it because it was quite an easy mesh anyway using curves, using extrude and using solidify. You can get that, that kind of look really, really simply. Plus I wanted them all the same way as well. You can see on the grey box there, they're not all the same way. They're a little bit different. So I need to make sure the roll starting position is really straight. Now I'm doing is I'm bringing the bones in. I'm going to uh, name all these bones, I'm going to make sure that my armatures are uh, renamed because uh, Blender has a bug, whereas if you send it to Unreal Engine you've not renamed the armature, then it will be uh, a bit buggy and won't work correctly. So now you can see that I've got the inner ring, outer ring, middle ring and the globe and what I'm doing now is just assigning weights to them just to make sure that it's going to move correctly around when I'm actually animating this. Must have gone for a cup of tea then because they're a lot there of pause. And now I'm doing is I'm inserting my keyframes in and you can see that I do have a lot of problems with this globe in how I actually want it to spin, how I actually want it to move. So I did play around with a lot of ideas and to get it exactly as I wanted it. 
Um, I think I cut some of this out actually, um, just uh, because it went on for a long time just to try and get this correctly. Just me fiddling around and trying to get the right movement for this, which isn't actually easy when you've got like three or four different parts moving around the center of each other like this. So you can see all I'm doing is I'm working my way outwards, starting with the globe, going to the inner, the middle, and then the outside. And it is basically from here, just uh, testing it out. Just make sure that you do use uh, interpolation um, once you finish, just to make sure that they spin correctly. And when they finish uh, the end of the frames, that the beginning of the frames, they, they move together correctly. You don't want it where they're just um, speeding up or anything like that. So put your interpolation, I think I put it either at linear or bezier on this. I think actually it's linear. If you're dealing with swings and things like that, just set it to bezier and then it'll look like the actual swing has weight for instance, but on this I put it on linear. You should do that as well if you're using or creating anything like wheels and they're spinning around. You need them to meet perfectly at the end and be the same speed throughout, then you would be using linear. All right, so you can see now I've pretty much got this nailed down. I'm just going to deal with the outside one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a test now. And there you go. You can see it's all done. It looks really, really nice. All right, so what I need to do now is I need to parent all these up to make sure that when I move the bottom um, of this globe, that the rest of it moves with it. That can sometimes be a pain because you don't actually want uh, your bones to move out of place or anything like that because you, you need to remember that you've uh, basically inserted a keyframe the location, rotation, and scale. So we need to then actually put it, parent it to the bottom. All right, so you can see now I'm just finishing that off, making sure the mesh is absolutely fine. I'm gonna shade smooth it and things like that now, once I've done this, just to make sure it's right, there we go. And then I'm just gonna parent all these parts up, bevel it off, and now I'm just testing to see if I can actually move it, which I can. So everything's moving perfectly. All right, so now I'm actually onto the box, and I'm thinking, first of all, on the gray box, there's three light boxes there, and I'm thinking, I should probably make some large books or something uh, to go down there, because that'll look really nice, so that's where I uh, got the idea from. I'm thinking, uh, probably this time period, probably not have cardboard boxes, so there would have been crates or something, but I'm thinking it would have been a lot more um, exciting to have these books on plus uh, I enjoy uh, creating different things so I thought oh okay I'll create these books they're gonna look quite nice so grab some references stylized books and away I went so here I am creating the bookmark just a simple bookmark with a solidify on just bend it so it looks like it's actually got some movement to it using uh, proportional editing at the end like so and then I need a backing on it. So I, I uh, create the back where it's actually gonna stand on while I've actually uh, got the book in the right place um, before I actually put it to the desk because that's gonna make it a lot easier to actually do that. And I knew already that for textures and things like that, that we were just gonna place them on the actual uh, books and things so we didn't have to worry about any of the modeling um, to encompass that or anything. And now I'm thinking where to actually put this book I wasn't sure at this stage whether I was going to rebuild uh, that telescope or not and how big I actually wanted the book. So you can see I'm trying to make it a little bit bigger, trying to make it a bit chunkier, but it's, it's simply not fitting together. So what I decided in the end is to put it straight down, that piece of wood, using the bisect tool, then pull it down. And it actually came uh, together quite well actually doing it like that because I still managed to keep that chunkiness of the book without reducing the size or something. And now I put a telescope there just to see how it's all going to come together. And now I'm going to go to work now on the books that are actually on the floor. Again, grabbing some more references and trying to make them a little bit different. You can see I'm doing the corners and just playing around with some ideas, playing around with the mirror, see if I can mirror it on its axis, which actually I found quite hard. So what I did was I duplicated it and then just mirrored it um, from the top actual menu instead. I did actually make myself a problem here because those actual center parts they weren't joined together properly, so a bit later on you'll see I have to go in and fix those. I give it a center gem, and I'm thinking this is one of the smaller books, so I think, I'm think i thinking that's okay, that looks pretty nice. And now we move on to the bigger book, and the bigger book I want to look a little bit more intricate. I always uh, tend to make the first one I do less intricate than the main one, because then it gives you a little bit of an idea of what you need to actually do. So here I'm making a quick padlock. I think I took this idea from Harry Potter or something like that. 
had a chain on it, but I just uh, didn't bother putting the chain on. I think it was the restricted section or something that this was taken from, or the idea of this, so. And now you can see I'm thinking how to make this a bit different from the other one, while at the same time a little bit more intricate. And you can see that I used the bevel, custom bevel again, just to get that angle, and it turned out really, really nicely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fiddle around with a few more things. Sometimes while I'm trying to uh, get some ideas of how I'm going to do it, I move on to something else and then I come back and it's uh, then I have fresh ideas in my head. So you can see I want the binding to be a little bit different as this is a much, much larger book. And I'm also thinking at this stage, um, making it intricate, but also at the same time, how can I give this look and a substance paint and what you can actually do with it because I know that if I've got a lot of you know kind of bits of mesh that are coming up and things it will force him basically to put in um, you know symbols and things like that into there make it look really really interesting plus uh, when you're using um, edge wear and things like that it's gonna make it look even nicer so I decided uh, in the end I think I just went with uh, two books and then one on the actual desk and now I'm actually onto the scrolls I uh, use the uh, Blender Curve add-on, it's a free add-on that comes with Blender and it's called Extra Curves and then you can actually create these spirals which gives you a really really good start for when you're creating uh, parchments or scrolls and things like that. Then what I'm going to do is just use the knife tool, cut away uh, some of the edges just to make them very very varied and now what I'm trying to do is smooth them out using Solidify as well just to make them nice and chunky. And now you can see that the actual smoothness on them doesn't quite go right. We've got a few head edges and things like that. Just making a simple seal here, starting with a circle, bend, bending it out. And then I know again that can go through to Substance Painter and we'll put some kind of symbol on that actual seal. So we won't need to do that with actually modeling, which is really, really handy. There you go, you can see now I'm getting there. Uh, funny um, edges on there. So what I'm going to do is I just go and uh, make sure all of the outside edges and that allows me then to smooth this off as, uh, as much as I like, which is a really nice technique to do that. I try and not actually even put sharps on unless I really, really need to. I'm a bit lazy, so. And I'm just placing the things in the way. And then I'm thinking I'm also probably gonna need some parchment, so I'll start with a plane, but that's probably not a good idea. So what I do instead is I actually draw on um, using my grease pencil and I'll turn that grease pencil then into my actual parchment which which worked out really really nice. I have a tutorial on using um, the grease pencil to create curves and things like that so I'll put that on the top right hand side as well. And again we're just uh, sharpening all the edges and by this point I got that technique pretty much nailed down just making sure the mesh is correct there. And then I can put this down and put them where I want them. So now I found the best technique to create parchment and scrolls, so that was pretty good. So anytime I come across them again, it's going to be pretty easy. Alright, so now what I'm doing is I'm creating the potions. Now I know with the potions that I want to send it through to Substance Painter, but I want to have an inside. In other words, I want the outside to be glass and the inside to be some glowing type liquid or something like that. So basically I just duplicated the outside, shrunk it down to make the inside, and then I know we can use that actually as a mesh on the inside. So glass on the outside, seeing straight through to that mesh on the inside. Quick cut. Then I just want to make sure because it is glass that these edges look good. Now I probably should have uh, brought down the liquid inside a little bit lower on this. I think we had a few problems when we brought this into Substance Painter. And then I did again the easiest uh, flask first. It was uh, pretty square and now I move on to the much, much harder flask. So again, start with the easiest, move on to the hardest. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate so much of it, bring it in, because obviously you don't want the liquid right the way up to the top of the flask. So, and I wanted them to look different anyway. You can see they extruded, then solidified this actual circle. And that didn't work out. So all I decided to do was just uh, duplicate these edges that I've already got and then solidify those and that turned out a lot better. Using proportional editing to bring out the uh, top part of it 
making another cork, making sure it goes in the right direction using normal. And there we go, I was quite happy with how that turned out and I could, to be honest, make those all day long because they're really, really actually fun to make. Alright, so now I'm starting on the floor. I'm using J there, by the way, to actually join the actual vertices. And then I'm using randomize on the floor, bevel in, and there we go, that's the floor done. Pretty easy technique, really, really good uh, result from there. Now I'm thinking that I don't want anything like the globe on here. So what I did was I took an idea from Beauty and the Beast with the candle, the animated candle. And basically what I'm going to do then is create the actual coat hanger as that actual candle. So you can see here. It was only later on where I thought, you know what, that, that actual candle, it does look like the candle from Beauty and the Beast. So it, it wasn't something I actually looked up. I didn't actually have a reference ready or anything like that. It must have been something that just stuck in my mind. So. And then I put some like planets or something like that on top of it just to finish it off. And it turned out really, really nicely. So I know I want to, uh, I don't want them going straight into the metal. I always like to put some ends on them just so it looks a little bit better. Like so. And just bend them out a little bit, looking though it's welded actually on there or something like that. Alright, so now onto the telescope. Now, Luke did such a good job on the telescope, it wasn't even a grey box, it was a fully built telescope, so what I did was I just took away some of the smaller parts. First of all, I thought, can I make, uh, you know, some teeth that go into those teeth, but then I thought, this is too complex and we don't need it that complex, so what I did was I just left the telescope as it is, and I made a little ink well. I'm gonna come back to the telescope, as I always do. And now onto the quill, and the quill, I was really, really happy how I did this, so basically I got a curve, with my grease pencil and I pulled that out and I use that actually as the feather as well as the quilt so you can see here pull it out and then I bring it in it just made it a really really nice quill actually now the thing is if you are going to do this and you're going to send it through to substance painter better off leaving actually the quill as a plane rather than you know bending it in to make it look like an actual feather because the feather in Substance Paints is, is much easier to do the work. All right, so now I thought, what else can I put on the coat hanger? And I'm thinking a cage. Now, if I had a bit more time, I would have liked to put a, uh, you know, some fairy in it or something like that, or at least a door or something. But instead, we just went with the cage, leaving it up to the imagination, a bit of storytelling there about what actually was in the cage or something like that. But you can see there how easy it was to actually create that cage. And all it did was just use a wireframe modifier on that. Alright, so now we're moving on to the actual hat. I'm not sure if it was a wizard's hat or a witch's hat, but either way. Again, because time was short here, I did actually probably go through this a little bit too fast. I probably could have done a better job on the actual hat um, if I'd have spent a little bit more time. You can see here. What I probably would have done is retopologized it and then actually had that uh, band that goes around the outside much cleaner than where it was here. But in the end, I was happy with it. It did come out really nice. I just could have made it a little bit easier on myself rather than, uh, you know, rushing this part a little bit. You can see there, I do have problems with the actual mesh um, having holes in it. And that generally happens when your mesh is uh, too thin. So what you're better off doing there is just using the inflate brush and then re dynameshing and then that'll fix it. So there you go, I'm just flattening off with H polish on here. You can see actually it comes out quite rough and ready, which is which is actually what we're going for anyway. Using trim down now making them thinking how can I cut this way? And I couldn't really cut this away, so instead what I decided to do was mask it all off. I'm gonna split it off. And then what I'm going to do is dynamesh it because that'll fill the holes anyway. So you can see there, filled the holes, and then I'll just do a new part in and make it a lot, lot cleaner than where it is. Take off back face uh, masking, pull it in, smooth it all out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through my actual um, brushes. And what I'm looking for here is cloth brushes. I already know I've got a pack, which is a really nice pack with uh, some kind of cloth bolts, which you can see that I'm using. So instead I use those because they're just on this thing. That they're perfect, they just turned out so well. I smooth them off a little, and finally now what I'm going to do is decimate it down. Bring it in, you can see it comes out really, really nice actually. 
All right, so now it's the lighting test. Pretty much everything's done. I delete everything out of the scene, bring in some light in, and basically this is the test uh, before we actually start um, UV unwrapping it and things like that, just to make sure that everything's looking really nice, making sure the scene's gonna come together really nice, and then once you've done that, then you can start going through the process of cleaning everything up. So I take one asset at a time, I basically mark the shots, I look to see if there's any topology issues or anything like that, I smooth them off, and then I use Auto Smooth. You can see them fixing some of the topology there. You can see that I'm also naming everything then and putting it into his own collection. That's the other thing I do. Because this space is gonna go through Luke, um, to Luke, sorry, who then is gonna take it through to Substance Paint. So you can see I'm adding some little details if I missed any. So it's a bit like uh, if you're working in a studio, you wanna make sure that everything's uh, named correctly everything's um, all the topology is done correctly you'll see in a bit as well i also make sure the normals are facing the correct way just to make sure that when he does actually get this it's it's perfectly for him and you'll have very little uh, downtime on trying to fix uh, different things not to say there won't be issues because there will always be some issues but they're much uh, less if you get into the habit of doing these final things before sending it through um, even if it's for yourself so you can see here now i'm actually smoothing the desk off Probably took an hour to do this last part, but that hour really does save a lot of time. I'm also beveling things up here as well. Um, you never want um, really, really sharp edges, so you can see I'm going down beveling them. And what I'm doing is it's not going to be the same bevel right across the board, so just check against the other um, things you've got in the scene and make sure that they're being beveled in comparison to those. So these are the last of the things that we need renaming, topology fixing, shops, and smoothing out. Like the crystals, we want those hard edge, so I'll go in there. You can see there that I'm uh, using the uh, clamp overlap. Um, I've got an actual tutorial on that, so I'll put that up in the top right hand side, just in case you're having trouble and your bevel's not working. You must be careful when using it though, it's better to find out what the issue is. That's causing you to actually turn off clamp overlap and you can see here I actually do find the issue So I go in and fix the issue which is that part and now actually my bevel works perfectly Again, we have a few problems again on the telescope and then it's fixed Now I'm going to bring everything back check all the normals as you can see any um, red spots And um, that basically means the normals are facing the wrong way. I do have a tutorial on this So I'll put it in the top right hand side again there we go that's where i had the problem so what i did was i go in and i just rebuild that part of it instead of messing around with it so sometimes it's just quicker to do that so i just went in and rebuilt it checking the last of the normals you can see at the bottom of the actual cage is not working properly so again i delete the topology and just rebuild it again it's just going to make it so much easier and anything you send through to substance painter or even unreal engine where the normals are facing the wrong way you'll actually see that you will just be able to see through the mesh unless you've got a double-sided shader or something like that so always better off to check this if you send them through to zbrush as well you'll also end up with a problem where again you'll be able to see through the mesh now what i'm doing is i'm grouping everything up that i want on the same uv map and you can see there that i'm just giving them different colors just so i know as a reference a visual reference that these uh, parts are actually going to go together we decided in the end i think to use five uv maps or something like that on this one um, initially we thought a UV map for each actual uh, component, but we thought that's way, way too high, especially if people are going to be downloading this as a pack and things like that. So we decided in the end just to basically put them on four or five UV maps. And then what you could do is you could actually download this pack and you can use them um, in uh, different uh, renders or different scenes and things like that without having to be too worried about how, um, how many UV maps you're actually using. So that brings us to the end of this uh, modeling part. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you got a lot out of it. If you're unsure about something, just go back and actually slow the video down, and I'll see you on the next one everyone. Thanks a lot, bye bye.
Now, in order to start up my texturing process, I firstly open up a blend file within Blender and just check the normal maps and everything that it turned out for the models, the way Neil modeled everything and how the UVs are set up, just to make sure they're all proper and they're going to be well set up for my particular workflow. I was really excited and I just wanted to get right into it and start off by texturing the scrolls. And then I realized that I firstly need to bake out the generated texture maps like curvatures and ambient occlusion just to make use out of smart masks to create smart materials. So afterwards, I just went ahead and continued the texturing process for the scrolls. I wanted to get some uh, different variations. So I used like some grunge maps and whatnot just to get some color gradients of the entire scrolls. I wanted to highlight edges, so what I did first, I wanted to get a kind of a lighter edge, so I used a larger mask, and then afterwards I got like those kind of thinner masks as well on edges, just to kind of make the edges kind of uh, black highlighted, just to get that kind of a stylized look to the scrolls and highlight the entire kind of a shape and edges of them. So afterwards I wanted to get a cover for the books. I used kind of a lever and I also made sure I used an anchor point just to make sure I apply uh, additional detail using masking techniques and get some highlights out of these kind of shapes that I've got through the material. So afterwards, I wanted to add some edges of the books as well. So what I did was I added some simple stripes to the lines and then I used the warping tool just to get some uh, bit of a curvature and whatnot, just to break off this entire kind of a uh, straight edges. And that way I think I got some nice kind of edge uh, on the sides of the pages. So it was quite nice. Afterwards, I wanted to get some kind of a material for the way of this bookmark so i wanted to use uh, some sort of a fabric so i started off with this as a base material by setting up a fabric material with a kind of a larger uv scale i was able to get it to be finer looking as a material overall and then moved on by applying some edge highlight and whatnot just to get that kind of a stylized aesthetic out of it so afterwards I went ahead and got a basic stamp look wax out of the scroll, uh, the one it was rolled in on the table and I wanted to get something for the floor of this uh, kind of uh, design as well. So I wanted to make sure I got some nice simplistic kind of aesthetic out of it but I now realize that I started off uh, with two simplistic looking tints. This is, although it's stylized, it's also having some uh, gritty kind of a look out of all the other materials so later on i came back to it and i just applied some grunge maps and i think i changed the color a little bit as well just to fit in with the entire theme so right now i also am looking at the book i realized that the book itself that's sitting on the table is not behaving with the sides of the pages the way i wanted them to be so i went ahead and applied some of a projection just to position it the way i wanted so afterwards, I uh, colored the quill real quick. I'm going to continue the, the process later on because I'll need to add a channel for the transparency. And I want to, I prefer doing that as the very kind of a last thing that I do. So later on, I continued my texturing process with the bottles. I realized that the bottles are uh, a bit harder to texture because I needed to mask them manually because I wanted them to have multiple materials. Uh, so transparency, I wanted to have some solid bits like the rings and the top sections, as well as liquid would have some emissive kind of a color. So what I did was I had to separately kind of uh, mask them out and make sure I'm applying the right kind of materials later on for them. So after I was happy with that, I wanted to get like a cork kind of a, a, a look on the top covering those kind of flasks and I wanted to get this kind of material. So what I did was I got some grunge map, I made sure the contrast is really big and then uh, kind of made it even smaller and took out the middle section so they got like circles sort of a thing and that turned out quite nice actually so I quite like the way that material turned out. So moving on, I started by adding wood onto the table. I wanted to have some variation between like the upper stool and the base of the table. So I played around with that a little bit. Then I continued on my texture process and uh, got some cloth uh, texture as well. Right now it's not looking as good. So I think I'll add some detail later on to it as well. So I'm right now playing around with the emissive map since I kind of really wanted to get that out of the way because it kind of ruined the overall 
looks. I wasn't sure what the type of color I was going to go for them, so I wanted to get that out of the way first. So after I was happy with that, I went ahead and started playing around with the metal of the aesthetics of the overall kind of design. And uh, I realize now that I'm using multiple variations. So for the metal, I think I use like one lighter and one darker kind of a look. And then I wanted to get like a brass kind of a, a look, the copper kind of a style to it as well. So I went ahead and made use out of the same material and just switch out the colors. And then afterwards for the lens, I wanted to get kind of a stylized look. So the main uh, way I was able to get that kind of a look to pop out those kind of lenses was by using baked lighting functionality and I was able to just overlay it on top of my texture and gave it gave me some nice results. So after I was happy with it, I went ahead and continued the texture process by uh, getting some details out to the textures uh, of the assets so i had a real nice uh, setup for the types of details that i want to overlay for this kind of uh, areas types of details that i want to use for my uh, assets and uh, i just used photoshop i grabbed some bits i made sure that all the textures are in the square format so i went ahead and put them in separately then i realized that for the stamp i need to get some sort of a height map as well so i went back to the photoshop and just made sure i had that and for the quill i needed an opacity as well as a color map so although the uh, weather is wide by itself i needed to make sure that the alpha is just pure black and white basically so i went ahead and made sure i used that i used just a simple uh, projection kind of a way to just overlay it right as a decal sort of a way and i just uh, made sure that the texture that i'm using it as a decal is being applied with an opacity and i was able to give me a nice kind of a feather look uh, to the quill so after what's happened with that i went ahead and continued some of the additional details that i needed to add i started off by getting some uh, details for like uh, locks and whatnot for the table uh, i was quite happy with the way they're turning out so i just wanted to get a little bit of that extra touch out of this uh, kind of aesthetic of this environment so i continued on by adding kind of an atlas overlay onto the globe i had like an old school kind of a map and i just used that to uh, project it actually the projection is like uh, from all sides so uh, the texture that i'm using is actually four textures uh, for replications of that same texture but good thing it's not as visible because there are rings and whatnot so it's uh, hard to notice that kind of a detail for when we're presenting the environment so i just used that sort of a trick to quickly get uh, sort of an overlay of that kind of a map for the globe so after I was happy with it, I went ahead and tried to get a design for the like the books and the scrolls and I wanted to get some uh, scriptures, some writing, just to make the overall kind of uh, nice aesthetic for these kind of uh, designs. So I was quite happy with the way they're turning out to be. But what I realized was the color is not looking too good as white. So because I used a simple paint brush uh, and just stamped out the detail, I had to actually remove all the detail and just quickly remake all the designs that I had before so it was a bit, a bit annoying and uh, I wasted a little bit of time because of it but I'm quite happy with the way it turned out and I'm quite happy with the result I also made sure I break out all the like scripture uh, scribbles with some symbols of like stars and whatnot just to get back to that theme so after I was happy with that I wanted to make sure I hide all the seams since some seams, because it was UV unwrapped automatically, um, they're not in right positions or like um, not in the best spots, but it's quite easy to hide them away. I just found all the ones that are using uh, curvature maps and whatnot just to um, get back to them and make sure that they're all um, just covered up uh, nicely for those areas. I'm checking out the uh, candle wax as well. I quite like the material that I had set up, which I made beforehand. A lot of materials I'm using are uh, from scratch, but some of the materials I already had, so it was easy to reuse them. So I uh, just made sure that the intensity for the candles are turned down by quite a bit. And after I was happy with it, I realized that there was a clipping issue for the scroll. At first I thought it's because it didn't bake out ambient occlusion maps properly, but it turned out that it was just uh, clipping through the table a little bit and I was getting some black kind of results out of it. So 
that was a mistake that I fixed it on later on, so it was okay. And then I was doing some final touches like getting additional detail for the cloth and uh, just making sure that everything is masked out properly. Uh, just uh, making sure that everything overall looks nice and color coordination and whatnot and just darken up the overall uh, uh, things like wood uh, variation, I darkened that up. All of it to make sure that everything just fits nice within the environment and is quite good looking as an overall design. So once I was happy with it, I went ahead and exported everything out. Uh, 4K resolutions I think I used this time. I just wanted to get some close-up shots. I knew I'm gonna use some close-up shots for Unreal Engine, so I wanted to get some nicer detail out of it. And once I was happy with it, I went ahead and got every texture map that I needed out of it and was getting myself ready for the Unreal Engine 5 part. Once I was happy with the way the textures turned out, I went ahead and opened up Unreal Engine 5. I created a new level and just simply set it up to be, or oh, whenever I open up a scene, it would be opened up to that specific scene that I want. So once I was happy with that, I went ahead and imported the FBX files. I realize now that uh, because I forgot the animation on the globe and they actually have to be imported separately because they have a skeleton mesh and now I am just simply importing everything at once. So that was, I uh, had to change that up later on. So once I was happy though with the way everything was out, everything is already within uh, its own position. All I had to do was just simply drag everything out onto the scene and position location, everything to zero, zero world space. So once I was happy with that, I went ahead and started off uh, doing texturing process. I went ahead and started creating materials, but before doing that, I needed to make sure that the pack texture maps are set, uh, set on uh, with uh, sRGB ticked off, which you can do by double clicking on it and just making sure they're ticked off. That way, we're actually using uh, alpha color variation properly. And basically, once I was happy with that, I created a master material, a really simple master material. And using that, I was able to then uh, create material instances out of it. And once I was happy with assigning uh, textures for the material instances, I simply used the same kind of naming as the texture maps. I was then able to make replacements for those materials and just replace the default materials that were uh, coloring this entire asset pack. So with that, I was then realizing that I need uh, to create additional materials uh, the ones for transparency and the ones for emissive. I think I, uh, the default uh, master material that I had already had a uh, emissive uh, texture pack already created, so I was making sure I have that. And then I went ahead and created a, some lighting, some basic lighting. So I deleted all the default uh, level lighting that I didn't like and just started off by creating kind of a basic skylight. I applied a cube map so it would basically give us some nice reflections without the need to actually have anything in the background since I wanted to have some solid color in the back anyway. So once I was happy with that, I just uh, created a bit of an extra intensity just to make sure to soften up those shadows to make sure that they're not too dark. And once I was happy with that, I started off by creating a kind of a gradient in the back. So I did that with some solid kind of a base as well as some exponential fog to give a bit of a transition between the colors. This way I was able to get some nice transition of a solid color. I left it off as is for now and I'm gonna come back to it later to ch change the colors in the kind of end bits. I just wanted to make sure that the environment is out of the way so I could focus on the texturing process. And now I realized that the quail as well as the bottles, uh, they actually need to be separate mesh so uh, I can apply the textures separately because you need the one uh, separate transparency as well as solid and also emissive texture maps just to make sure that they're being uh, properly rendered. Otherwise, if you have a transparency on the material and they're not using transparency, you're just going to get some weird, weird results. So once I was happy with that, I just simply used the modeling mode to split them up apart. I didn't want to go back to a Blender. I just wanted to make sure I use that. If you want to get a modeling mode, all you gotta do is go onto the plugins and search for modeling and you'll be able to find yourself 
modeling mode that you can after you restart the, your engine you'll be able to use once you take it on so that just helps out to make some couple of fine tuning uh, adjustments to your meshes real quick it's super easy to do but anyway once i was out with that i just wanted to make some candle light so i started off by trying to use niagara particle fluids and i kind of realized that it's actually too realistic i wanted to get a really nice result for the lights so i was trying to make it smaller also get like uh, less smoke and just um I was playing around with the particles just to um, get kind of a stylized look out of them but they were like just too intense for me i didn't quite like the way they behave and we didn't have as much control over um how they were actually i'd say um the complexity of the overall particle system so i just didn't like that they were just too realistic looking the shape of them were just too too much for me so i think i just uh, scrapped the idea i'm leaving this in the video though because i just wanted to show that sometimes you do have a certain idea that you want to go with and you're uh, getting a start, uh, sort of a method uh, that you're planning to use, but it just turns out it doesn't work and you gotta just scrap that part of the, your idea and you just gotta make use of something else and try to make use of a different technique. So that's exactly what I did in this case. So right now I'm still trying to play around with the fire. I'm desperately trying to get this sort of a fire that I really kind of like and I use for these candles, but it's just not... It's not working, it's not going as well. So I just deleted everything, got myself a texture and uh, found myself a way to um, just uh, play around with uh, texture coordinates just to move uh, the kind of a light back and forth. I tried to use uh, basically combining sign and time and just getting it go move back and forth like that. But I realized that it's not as good looking. So what I did instead was I combined the panner and just uh, attached it uh, through the sign value and by using that i was able to just kind of give it a nice wobble i also use the divider just to divide the values and make sure they don't go past the texture coordinates uh, outside of the texture plane so once i was happy with that i just then wanted to get myself uh, a plane that's always facing the camera i found myself a documentation on unreal engine that allows you to uh, have uh, a plane positioned based on a camera so i simply co copy the notes and uh, make sure i link them up properly to my material and afterwards i realized that they're actually based on a local axis so what i had to do was i just created a new plane and make sure i bake the transformation so the top of the plane would be actually the local axis of that plane this way it was always facing the front of the camera based on those local axis so once I was happy with that, I just applied it to other uh, parts of the candles, uh, to other candles as well. And then I wanted to get some lighting uh, flicker onto those candles just to um, liven up the entire scene. So I got myself a simple point light and for the intensity, before doing the intensity though, I just wanted to make sure that my radius of the light is um, kind of small so it wouldn't affect the entire scene, it would just affect that small area of a globe and a bit of a telescope just to highlight those edges a little bit only and then i went ahead and created a quick uh, blueprint just to uh, randomize the intensity with a randomized delay as well so that way the delay would kind of make it a random kind of combustions and kind of that it would give you a really kind of a nice uh, natural looking flicker for the flame for the candles so right now I'm uh, kind of realizing that the intensity is way too high. I think I'm, I started off by using a couple like uh, 10,000 or something of the sort. It was the, uh, the lux intensity for the light was way too high. So I had to uh, lower that down, uh, but that's going to be in the future. I then went ahead and played around a bit with post-process effects, uh, changed a bit of lighting uh, for the background just to get a nicer result and then i went ahead and wanted to highlight a bit of those potions so i added some extra po uh, extra point lights i think i then changed up the color for those potions to red and green because uh, i just wanted to break off that scene a little bit i think the blue didn't quite look as well so i then switched out the point light colors as well for those areas just to make it look a little bit more nicer so once i was happy with that I played around a bit with post-process effects uh, got a bit of contrast got a bit of an exposure made sure that 
that exposure, uh, the minimum and maximum is always set to constant, uh, constant one, just to make sure that it doesn't switch out for when we're rotating the camera. I later on added a plane in the background only for one of the shots though, because when I was moving the camera, I didn't quite uh, like the way it was turning out. So basically I left the gradient uh, set as a default kind of a, uh, this sort of a color and I'm also playing out with, with vignette. I set out the camera just so I would know where my main shot is at, just so I could get the right kind of an angle. And then I started off by going onto Photoshop. I wanted to make some adjustments to that and use LUT to uh, get some color gradient out of it, just since I found that to be uh, a little bit more easier to do. So later on, a bit of with, uh, I played around a little bit with levels I played, uh, played around with some exposure and whatnot in Photoshop and once I was happy with that I just got myself a that color palette that needs to be used for the Photoshop I applied it or I applied those uh, adjustment layers for that palette I cropped down the entire image just for that area and then once I was happy with it I saved it out and simply applied it onto the project which by default the intensity was quite too high so I just lowered the intensity overall and again went back just to make some finer changes to shadows as well contrast and gamma just to play around with the overall intensity of the colors so we'd get the proper kind of lighting set up for this environment just to make it more pop out I suppose in uh, in videos and images so once it was added that we then changed around the the lighting flicker since it was too intense for this area lower down the range and I was happy with a lower value once I was happy with that I went ahead and checked the way the lighting looks for other areas as well so right now I'm changing the potions the way I said it I decided to add uh, another kind of um, variation using a uh, massive material like I just multiplied uh, a different color and turned out pretty well in the end I think so I'm just overlaying uh, red in this case and green for the other potion and just got some nice values out of them and of course I'm changing the point light point lights gotta make sure I have two of them this time because it's not only one color so on one side it would be more of a red tint on the other side it should be more a green tint now I'm playing around just a little bit with the scene just tweaking some small values getting those light flickers higher getting uh, some of that light intensity a little bit smaller um, stuff like that and once I was happy with that I then started off by actually getting those camera angles and camera shots the way I want them to be so by zooming in the camera the first shot that I like to do is zooming in the camera and getting the focal kind of a distance and this way you're able to get kind of a a shot where the camera doesn't look like it's moving but your your perspective your FOV of uh, objects like the ones that are closer would kind of like bend to the side of you it's quite a nice kind of a shot so I quite like that so I got some uh, basic shots as well like turntable I wanted to do the turntable that turns a couple of times instead of just having it turn one time and then uh, looping it in the end in the video editor I wanted to make sure it properly kind of spins so I might as well just added the um, kind of I think free uh, turns and I think that was enough uh, it was just fine to do that so once I was happy with that I went ahead and added even more cameras I made sure I add a pivot point a kind of a focal point just a random object that I picked I picked up a sphere and just attached the camera to it and then that sphere I uh, was uh, making sure that I ticked off uh, in-game uh, render uh, within its properties just to make sure that we are when we are um, filming when we are playing the environment it's not going to be visible but uh, we can just simply click on the asset within the level itself and just move the camera using those kind of pivots so that was quite nice but moving them around to the assets that I want I was then able to rotate the camera around those areas and make some really nice shots I think later on when I was uh, moving uh, the camera, for example, in certain areas, I set up a focal point to be um, of that object. So basically, the camera would always uh, look into that object, into that ball, into the sphere of our focal point. So with that, I was able to move my camera um, that, that doesn't get attached to. I was able to move my camera and simply the camera would still uh, try to focus and rotate towards uh, looking towards that sphere to the center of that sphere 
that was quite nice. I'm just getting a couple of extra close-up shots for like lights and uh, some scrolls just to um, get some nice overall video in the end. So I was really enjoying this process. I really like making some shots and um, all of the videos I am not I'm making sure that they're not too long. Uh, all of them are 10 seconds. The turntable is a little bit longer because I just want to make sure that it's uh, just a slightly bit longer just to have enough time to turn around a couple of times. So in the end, you can always cut it out, cut it out using the editing software. So that's quite nice. So just playing around with the focal uh, rotation point as well as the camera moving in and out. Uh, I sometimes try to go in uh, between the transform tools, between the world position and the local position, just so I could have, for example, if the camera, because the camera is uh, facing towards the focal position, if I turn on local pivot point, I'm able to move it directly towards that focal point, even though it's rotated in a kind of an awkward angle and just using a world position uh, transformation tool wouldn't work quite as well. So gizmo, using a local gizmo is quite useful sometimes in that regard. So afterwards I'm just adding an atlas in the background and again, because uh, I'm not using for all of the shots, I don't think, yeah, it didn't look quite as well for all of the shots in the background. So just making sure I'm only using it for one area or whenever I'm panning other shots though, I just uh, left it as a default kind of gradient look. But yeah, it was really nice to play around and uh, just get the right kind of angles and shots for this entire asset. I'm also making sure that the plane is only visible in one uh, camera shot. So for the rest of them, it's just like TikTok or in-game render. It's super easy to do. You can also always attach them onto your sequencer. And once I was happy with everything, I just went ahead and rendered out the entire sequencer. And later on, I was able to cut them out within the video editor. That's going to be it, guys. In regards to overall summary, the gray box setup wasn't too bad in regards to making it as the overall environment was in a controlled small space so it was quite easy to make an interesting silhouette for it. Uh, took a bit more time in making the gray box idea for it as I wanted to test out in which way the design or the props would go for and I wasn't quite sure of the overall kind of idea at the very start. Modeling part was given a 5 because although most of the modeling was simple stuff, there are a few parts like the hat and potions that require a bit more expertise. The other thing of course is this is a scene that has a fair amount of assets which can make it hard for the beginners to take on. I think people used to modeling with Blender will find this scene quite a challenge if they don't break it down properly. The texture part was a lot of fun as I had a lot of interesting new materials for it but I give it an 8 as it was quite a challenge to get for the scene needed for the stylized materials. A lot of the texture detail had to be manually adjusted to exaggerate some of those kind of edges and get some extra detail out of them. Also, since I'm more used to doing kind of outdoor scenes, I don't have a lot of uh, indoor materials, so I had to do a lot of them from scratch, and this took quite a bit of time. All in all, this stage I reckon would be the hardest for the beginners, as you need to have a lot of technical knowledge for masking techniques and how to overlay them properly to get the right results. The animation was a little tricky to the fact it has many bones that need to run smoothly together, but nothing is too difficult for the beginners, maybe a little bit overwhelming with wave parts of the globe properly. Anyone that are used to animation though will find this part a breeze. The Unreal Engine part wasn't too bad to set up either, as it is mainly a stationary scene. There are some elements like setting up light flicker, which might have been a bit more difficult for a beginner to make, but all in all, it was all about the post-processing and tweaking those values to get the vibrant colors and the scene set up the way you want it to be. But that's going to be it. I really hope you enjoyed the video for a stylized astronomy table. Please give us a like if you did and make sure to drop a comment down below of what you would like us to do next. Also, check out the links down below to see our massive library of courses we have available, which are free to anyone that signs up for our Patreon. We also have some free goods on our Gumroad, things like texture packs and some models for anyone to download. So that'll be all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.